Welcome back. This episode, we'll be talking about sexuality. I'm going to just jump right into my story. Well, when I was growing up, I was eight years old, and I knew I was a lesbian. I had a teacher. Her name was Mrs. Fox. And I would bring her an apple every day to school. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is the woman for me. And then she had a husband, and he would come and kiss her. And I would get in between them, and I was like, oh no, this is my woman. You got to get your own. And he was like, no, this is my woman. I was like, no, this is mine. And he was like, well, she's coming home with me. I said, well, I don't know about that. So I would get in the car and have her drive me home every day. So that was the fun part of kindergarten. <laughs> oh, buddy. Looking back now, that is so funny. But, <laughs> uh, but ever since then, I knew I had liked women a lot. And then I grew up and had my very first girlfriend. And I had a crush on her, and we used to play sports together, and I used to push her in the locker and take her clothes. That was the meanest thing in the world. But I did it. <laughs> so, yeah. And then she didn't understand why I was doing it, but then I didn't realize that she liked me doing that. So when I stopped, she was like, well, why did you stop doing that? And I was like, I don't know. I said, I thought she didn't like it, and then she wound up liking me, and I liked her, and I was like, this is the weird thing ever, but, uh, weird relationship. So, we was in a relationship for a long time, like that, and um, then I got married at the age of 13, and realized that I didn't like men. And he didn't like women, so that was perfect. He was gay and I was a lesbian, so that worked out perfect. And I had my girlfriend and he had his boyfriend. I was like, oh yeah. And he was like, are you sure? I was like, yep, yeah, I'm definitely sure. I said, well, just, you know, we have to have this one child, so let's make it quick. You know, so we did. We had one child, but then I knew that women was where I was. I told my family when I was 13, I had just got married, and my grandmother says, what is the suitcase for? And I was like, oh, this is my suitcase. I said, you can't touch my suitcase. And she was like, well, I want to see what's in it, because you're always carrying the suitcase everywhere. Mind you now, I had a suitcase of toys. And um, my grandmother opened it up, and she's like, what in the world is this? She was like, well, you don't need this stuff. What is this stuff for? She was like, don't you got a man, don't you? I said, yeah, but I don't need that. And then she was like, well, what you need that for? I was like, for my girlfriend. And she's like, for your what? And I was like, for my girlfriend. And she was like, well, you ain't got no girl. She's like, you, you ain't gay. I was like, yeah, I am. She's like, yeah, no, you're not. And I, we went back and forth battling out for couple of hours and she was like well I gotta go and tell everybody because you're not gay and I'm telling and she's like I don't understand why you want to do something like that and I was like because it's, it's not want to do something like that it's just who I am you know she was like well why you got to be like that and I was like well I've been like this all my life and she's like well I knew you was kind of kind of different I was like yeah she's like you was over there slinging that had sludge hammer with the boys and climbing the trees and skipping rocks and stuff across the field in the water. And she's like going fishing and hunting with the boys. And you never wanted to, work, to play with them, the um, girl toys. She's like, I ain't seen you with a doll baby since the doll baby seen you. And she's like, you always wanted to blow the doll babies up in the backyard. Mm -hmm. She's like, so I knew you was kind of different. I was like, yeah, but. I just like women. She was like, oh, well, I don't know. She's like, well, we got to see if we can change this. So then roughly my family, you know, they're very religious. So they was like, oh, we got to pray this way. And 
So we had a, a whole mass for me to pray the lesbian way. When it ain't work, I'm still a lesbian. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that mass was for nothing. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we we definitely they did not pray the gay away. Um, then my aunt comes down from New York and she's like, well maybe if I come down I can help you. And that's what she told my grandma. And I was like, well help my grandma do what? How to get the BA away because it's not working. So my aunt came down and she was like, we're just going to get help you get rid of this gay. And then my grandma was like, okay. And I was like, okay. So I'm sitting there and they're doing what they're doing and I'm like, okay, y'all got to hurry up because I got to get to my girl's house. So they're sitting there doing this, this heinous thing, whirling around me with these brushes and trees and smoke and chicken feet. And I was like, okay, is this is gay gone yet? Because I got to go. And I was like, well, I came down from New York to see you and help you get your gay away. And I was like, well, is there a pill I can take? Because I got to go. And she was like, no, there's no pill. She's like, we got to do it just like this. And I was like, oh my God. So my grandmother, my mom, and my aunt, they're sitting there trying to, to wash the gay away. And then I'm like, just sitting there like, okay, this is not working in my head. And I'm like, let's hurry up and get this over with. So then my uncle comes in and he's like, what are you doing to this child? And I was like, they're trying to guess, they're trying to wish the gay away. And he was like, well, is it working? I was like, well, I was like, no, I still got to go to my girlfriend's house, so it ain't work. He was like, well, then what is you sitting here for, child? He's like, well, just go. He was like, he could have went a long time ago. I was like, well, they told me I had to sit here and wait till they was getting the gay away. I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> So, with that said, the following week they wanted to do another mass at the church for a whole, you know, if you know anything about mass, they want, it goes on for hours and sometimes days. And I was like, oh my God. So I'm sitting there like waiting. My husband's sitting in the front. He's like, well, is it working? He's like, then you can try it on me. I was like, no. I said, how about they try it on you and then I'll come back. <laughs> and he was like, no. He's like, he's like, let me see if it works on you first and then I'll go. I was like, well, I don't want to go. So we, that was the whole point of the mass. And I was like, after that, my family was like, well, this ain't working. And then they went, they said, like, well, Lily, this ain't working on her. And then we got to try something different. They was like, well, what you going to try? And I was like, I don't know what y'all going to try, but I'll be back tomorrow. Cause I'm tired, and by that, by that time I was like, I knew that I had to get away from that situation. So it was a, a long, daunting process of telling my family, and then they're asking a lot of questions, and then I had to hide my suitcase, <laughs> cause every time they was like, well, if they take the suitcase, then they were like, oh, she can't do anything if she if they take the suitcase. So I'm like, we we'll just buy more. <laughs> <laughs> which they didn't understand that and then my grandmother was like well how do you do that and I was like well I don't know how I do it grandma you just do it and I was like it's like riding a bike she's like riding a bike she's like well did you did you fall off I was like yeah a couple of times I fell off grandma she was like well that ain't no fun she's like you shouldn't even try that then I was like but you said you want to ride a bike <laughs> So I was like, she was trying to do everything to, to convince me that I was on the wrong bicycle. But uh, yeah, I knew I was on the right bicycle. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, coming out to my uh, sister, she was the hardest one because she was like, she felt that she had did something wrong, so she's like, I got to go to church and pray it away because she said, it's all my fault. And it's like, she's like, I joined the military and it made you gay. And I was like, I don't understand how that made you, hey, made me gay by you joining the military. And she was like, if I wouldn't have never left and went to the military, you wouldn't be gay. And I was like, that don't have anything to do with it. And then she was like, well, if I wouldn't have left the state, you wouldn't have been gay. I was like, what? 
I couldn't think of anything to think to say to that because it had nothing to do with that. But um, yeah, she blamed herself and she was like, re took it real hard, you know. And then I told my brother, and he was like, "It's okay, I'm gay too." I was like, "Well, thank you. At least somebody's in this family gay, shoot, besides me." He was like, "I like boys too." He's like, "I finally could tell somebody." I was like. Okay, he's like, I waited 74 years to tell somebody. I was like, thank you. Well, you can tell me. So, yeah, my brother t finally told me. And I was like, oh. Huh. And then the guy who was his best friend was his actual boyfriend. And they had been together for a very long time. So I was like, okay. One of the most concerning things in the LGBT community that I'm really concerned about is the slamming and hurting of others in the community. Um, for example, um, there's a lot of lesbians who are studs and femmes and studs and then they say that, oh, well, studs shouldn't like this or shouldn't want to be touched or how that they should be acting. But my thing is, we're all women and we're all, at the end of the day, have the same thing. So how can you tell another woman what they should like or what they shouldn't like? Or, you know, or some studs are not hard enough or not manly enough to be a stud, what classified them to be manly enough or not manly enough to be a stud or not to be a stud, um, that is a lot of shaming. And then um, films and films, it's okay for films and films to be together but not stud and stud to be together. What's the difference between that and when they go and say, well, they can't be together because they're studs or they can't be together because they're films. How does that work? And then you put it all together and say, well, we're tired of other people telling us what to do when we're doing it to ourselves. We're bashing each other. Another thing is like in the LGBT community, we are all one. We should stand up for one another. There shouldn't be a division in this community because we are all going through the same things. We are all having the same issues. There is a lot of people against us, so we shouldn't be against us. We're fighting amongst each other. It's not working. We all need to come together and work together to protect each other because by bashing each other, it's getting us nowhere. We already have people outside bashing us. We don't need the inside bashing us too. So, if you are a Christian, or whatever your religion is, and you have a child that comes out to you, and you are based on the Bible, or whatever Bible you practice, um, and you feel that you want to talk to them about it, I I would recommend that you love that child, listen to that child, and hear what they have to say. For you never know whether or not it's a struggle for them anyway to come and tell you about it and two you don't even know whether or not it might be something that you know it's a fear of theirs or they just need someone to just be a listening ear and not speak upon it because sometimes by putting too much emphasis on what it is you might miss what it was and what was actually needed to be said versus by saying, oh, well, the religion says it's not right. 
but you would have heard what that child actually was trying to say versus what you believe. Sometimes pushing your beliefs on someone else is more harmful than helpful. Mm -hmm. So if you just take a moment to love that child, listen to that child, be there for that child, you'll see what that child needs. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button so you'll never miss an episode. And comment below and tell me something about yourself. Because I am Daz and you are you.